And so if you're just wondering why now, that's a question I have as well here. So you see there in Los Angeles, uh, you see there in Miami, it looks like the camera uh, is somewhat veering off the actual residence and property in question from Diddy, but we're gonna keep it up nonetheless. This is coming to us from our um, partner WSVN down there in South Florida. So in the meantime, we're gonna keep this up. We're gonna be bringing in voices to help us make sense of this story. Why now, what could go into a probe like this, a federal sex trafficking probe? And who, if we find this out, might be implicated? Is it Diddy himself? Is it not Diddy? Are some of his associates intertwined with this? We just don't know those details right now. Yeah, so if you're just tuning in right now, they have raided Diddy's home in Los Angeles, Diddy home in Miami, Homeland Security for that old sex trafficking. Is this the end of that boy Diddy? Is it over? Is he the next R. Kelly? We gonna find out. Is this the new trial of the century? Is this the OJ child, the dream team? How is this going to play out for that boy, Diddy? You know, it's your boy, Tommy Springfield. And so, like I said, um, Fox Hold 11 on. in Los Angeles, uh, this is an exclusive to them. I mean, they were over, Sky Fox was over this first, uh, Haley Winslow down there on the ground doing some great reporting, trying to get a better sense of the situation, a better handle of the situation um, as she uh, was reaching out to sources uh, within Homeland Security. And so we don't know a lot at the moment. What we know right now is happening live as we speak, residents affiliated and connected with the music mogul and rapper, Sean Diddy Combs are being raided right now by numerous law enforcement officials in what we are told, according to Fox 11 in Los Angeles, is a probe into a federal sex trafficking investigation. Now both there in Los Angeles and in Miami, Florida. So we are overhead both of the residences in question. We do not know essentially because we did not see live how the um, basically the breach went in Miami. Uh, we did see though how it went in Los Angeles and we can cue that back up show you that in just a moment here uh, of when these what looked like SWAT team officials breached one of these doors there at the mansion in Holmby Hills in Los Angeles. So I want to bring up some of the context yeah, though, over. as far as what this Diddy has experienced in the past three to four months. And see, here's the thing. Because when, I think when, the context when, is when important. The police so remember come, the feds, Sandra Ventura, security. that's the famous R&B singer. They run down your whole Cassidy. arrest work. Uh, she record. dropped the bombshell lawsuit in New York federal Jake, court listen. against Diddy. Now, they dated between 2005 and 2018. The lawsuit detailed very damaging and disturbing allegations over years of alleged sexual, physical, and emotional abuse. Now, the two settled on an undisclosed settlement the very next day. So remember, Cassie was asking for around $30 million in damages. She was about to publish somewhat of a tell-all memoir from what I remember at the time. Now, a week later after that, two more women came forward and accused Diddy of sexual abuse in a separate lawsuit. Both of those lawsuits were filed last November on the eve of the expiration of the Adult Survivors Act. It's a New York law allowing victims of sexual abuse a one-year window to file civil action regardless of the statute of limitations. That was somewhat of a groundbreaking law uh, in New York passed to allow those victims of sexual abuse and sexual assault to file their claims no matter what that the statute of limitations had expired. So I'm only saying this because I think it's important to let you know what has been going on with some of the claims levied against Diddy over the last three to four months. Fast forward to today, March the 25th, Monday. 
We get word from Fox 11. See, they run your whole arrest record down. Everything about you. Did he deter? Did he piss somebody off? It's over, did he? Sorry, man. Here from Fox 11. This is a residence affiliated with Diddy, the media and music mogul. Then, what, 30 minutes later, we find out live happening in Miami, investigators are doing the very same thing across the country. And what we are told, Fox 11 Los Angeles, saying this is a investigation, federal one at that, into sex trafficking. In the meanwhile here, like I said, we are bringing on some of our experts, legal analysts, uh, law enforcement experts who know a thing or two about these probes, who know a thing or two about these investigations and how these raids are carried out. We're gonna keep the live pictures up. We're gonna hear some of these voices though, right now, including our friend, uh, attorney and expert, Nicole DeBoard, uh, who has been following this as well. She joins me. Um, yeah, you see how quick they get up and run in like what a major, major they've been ready to take Diddy down. They just been waiting for the call. That's it. Legal sagas over like, the last three or four I hope Diddy know they've been planning like said, this, but saying they're related. I think it's important to be fair speaking to bring them up. Diddy was not um, there. They could only go in like when that, no one was there. So people they had Diddy in them if they were in any of these apartments, they had to leave. But let's listen to her. But never a good sign when the feds show up at both of your residences with search warrants at the same time. Uh, this is done so that evidence is not lost or destroyed. It's also done by surprise so that any witnesses at either of these locations can be interviewed um, while they're not expecting it. So this is exactly what I would expect for warrants of this nature. And they're looking for laptops, thumb drives, images, documents, anything to verify the types of complaints that they're investigating. You know, Nicole, you've prosecuted and dealt with a lot of these cases in the past. And for our viewers who don't know, what is the legal bar to reach the statute definition of sex trafficking in the United States? What do you need if you're some of these investigators who are pouring over some of these devices, presumably that they have seized, hardware, software, a lot of drives, I would imagine, photos they are taking all over these residences. What do you even look for? You're looking for evidence of compelled prostitution, essentially, or uh, for potentially minors uh, being asked to engage in sex acts. You're looking for anything that would demonstrate that there is essentially a sex trade being operated either out of those locations or that there's evidence at these locations to show that that's what was happening here. And, you know, one reason that this could be investigated by federal law enforcement as opposed to state and local law enforcement is because they believe that there is some activity that cross state lines, for example. I know, I think that's really kind of enlightening here, too, because this is something you just don't see every day. And I don't want to speculate on kind of the scope of the probe or the investigation, but could one be led to believe that with the number of law enforcement officers on scene, the amount of people that they brought to conduct a raid like this, is that indicative of the scope of the raid or is this just normal everyday business about how these raids are conducted? I, I know you're not a law enforcement expert, but, but you're looking at this right now and you're seeing the amount of manpower to carry something like this out. I know these are mansions, you have to go through almost every room, you have to sweep the grounds, and you have to make sure no one is a threat when you make a raid like this, but should we look into something like that? Law enforcement as a general rule wants to make sure that they're completely prepared for what they're about to encounter, and that usually involves, and, and does involve, a great deal of intelligence gathering prior to going to the property. And, and just looking at what, what you're seeing on the screen, what I'm seeing on the screen right now, are both of these properties are huge. It's also very possible that both of these properties have other individuals walking around. So, uh, you know, in the residences, it's going to be really important that they have enough manpower there not only to search thoroughly these very large businesses or buildings rather not businesses residences uh, but that they have manpower there 
to interview anyone that they encounter uh, and be able to secure them away from each other. So one thing you don't want as law enforcement is to have all of the witnesses that you're seeing at this residence, for example, corralled in one location so that they can talk to each other and trade information as you're setting out on your investigation. You wanna make sure all these witnesses are separated so that you can start interviewing them and get their point of view uniquely. You know, Nicole, we also saw on the video here that law enforcement in Los Angeles in the Holmby Hills home, they detained people around the house or in the house. Now, you know, they're not necessarily, and correct me if I'm wrong, they wouldn't be considered suspects. Is that normally how law enforcement would do this? They would detain people on the scene just for questioning and then maybe release them later or or do they know who they're looking for are they going to these raids to arrest people is what i'm asking sometimes the answer is both and sometimes the uh, warrant actually says it's a search and arrest warrant so they're there to actually arrest certain individuals who they do believe are suspects and sometimes they're just search warrants which means they are there to gather information they have some very particular information they have to give a judge in order to get a judge to sign off on a warrant because you can see there by looking at the screen yourself. I mean, this is a very invasive process. They're going into the home of an individual and there has to be reason enough to believe that what they're looking for is going to be in that home. And they have to secure all of the individuals walking around in that home or detain them uh, to make sure that they don't dispose of evidence. Uh, or move evidence or do something to potentially damage the investigation. So it may not be that everyone in that home is a suspect. It could be that everyone in the home is a suspect or it could be some combination. Okay, you know, that makes that makes sense. You know, um, we're getting some reporting in from our friend, Megan Cuniff. She's a legal affairs journalist in Los Angeles. Sober for um, that boy, She Jerry, says man. this, and if we could go back Miles to the cell one right next to R. Kelly. Put I think the jurisdiction the same is really, really cell. important. You know, it, it might not necessarily be that, you know, prosecutors in L.A. or Miami are bringing this. This could be somewhere else, and, and they could have asked the, you know, local state law enforcement to conduct this. Megan Cuniff says this, Nicole, Diddy's home is being raided in Los Angeles, but I've confirmed with the U.S. Attorney's Office the case is not out of L.A.'s Central District of California. Uh, and Megan says the Southern District of New York is most likely. Now, that would track with a statement Fox 11 Los Angeles reporter Haley Winslow on the scene got from Homeland Security investigators from New York. So that would potentially lead many to believe, lead us to believe that this could be coming out of New York. That's where the nucleus of the investigation is, so to speak. I don't want to say that's confirmed, but that's what we're somewhat hearing. I think that's absolutely possible, and it's possible that even though there's not maybe a federal investigation going on in the California district or even in Miami, they uh, have given a judge enough information to believe that it is reasonable to expect that evidence of the crime being prosecuted or investigated in New York is at these two locations. That's what they would have to show the judge in order to get the warrant. And it could be that maybe not now, they're not looking at a, a particular charge in either of these districts in Florida or in California, but you know, really it depends on what they find here. Um, right now they believe evidence of a crime committed in New York is to be found at the location in Los Angeles and Miami. It's possible that what they uncover could lead them to believe that also there was a potential crime in those jurisdictions and they would not be foreclosed from being able to investigate those crimes, even though that's not what the warrant initially set out to find. You know, so is it customary for where the warrants are served, you would make the leap that the crimes were committed in these places, correct? That That's safe to say, the alleged crimes, so to speak, that's why the raids are being held as we speak? Not necessarily. It could be that they believe evidence of those crimes can be found in those locations. So in other words, it could be a crime they believe occurred in New York, but they have reason to believe and it's strong enough information that they were able to get a judge to sign off on a warrant to indicate that evidence of the Yeah, they want to make sure they want to find them Diddy tapes for all them tapes that Diddy filmed of all these rappers he done. Not necessarily so that they believe the crime itself Prayed with, as Gene Dale said. 
although it could <laughs> evolve that that later turns out to be the case. You know, Nicole, uh, like I said, you have a lot of experience in prosecuting these cases, um, but we are watching federal agents raid two mansions, thousands of square feet, multiple acres. That's a lot of ground to cover. There are going to be, you could imagine, thousands of pieces of evidence. I mean, these are large, large properties here. That's completely true, and I've had an opportunity to defend quite a few of these cases, and these cases are indeed complex. Uh, not only do you have a, an instance where you have just the idea that these cases can have terabytes and terabytes of information, which are later produced to the defense team, but you have two locations now that are just very large where they're gathering this information from. So I can expect whoever is ultimately representing Mr. Diddy to uh, Mr. Combs to have to sift through incredible amounts of physical and digital evidence just to try to find out exactly what these accusations are about. Yeah, unfortunately it looks like um, Sky Fox there in, a, in Los Angeles is going to be uh, flying away. We still have our live picture though uh, in Miami as well. What's the coordination and cooperation like now that this is looking like a bi-coastal operation and investigation. How hard is it, Nicole, to get everyone on the same page, to get everyone on board with this is what we're looking for, this, you know, maybe who we need to question, who we need to detain. Is that is that a very heavy lift, so to speak? It is a heavy lift, and you can imagine that there were hours and hours of planning that went into the execution right down to who would be involved on each team, uh, because it has to be something that is not leaked, it is coordinated as to timing, and you have two completely different time zones, um, and so you want to make sure that every person on each of those teams is going in at the same time, because you don't want whoever you're trying to investigate to learn that you're looking for documents in one location because they could quickly uh, secrete them or hide them, destroy them in the secondary location. So this has to happen at the same time. Um, it also is best if it happens at the same time because you don't want witnesses talking to each other about what the other one said before law enforcement has an opportunity to talk to these folks. So it is a very heavy lift. It, it takes a lot of coordination and you want to make sure that everyone on the team knows what their role is and what they're supposed to be doing and not supposed to be doing. Okay, so we're taking a live picture right now, Nicole, there uh, in Miami at the residence, one of the residences of Diddy there. Um, I want to show for the viewers that we're going to bring you on camera. Diddy, that's a nice home, you but uh, uh, us, um, we're gonna keep that sound just a little bit longer because this don't is a look nothing story, like that, bro. You better start practicing. Uh, we're gonna you better be like your boy Kevin Hart a moment. and start practicing uh, like in a movie, uh, Get Hard. And take them back about how we even came to be familiar and acquainted with this story. We were watching this on one of our feeds they don't uh, oh, about Diddy's an hour ago now, and we were watching Agents and I'm assuming New York, so too, because they said the one to to is out of New York. Here. So um, take a look at this. All right. You see there so many of these agents that are trying to break down one of these front doors or at least gain access to it. And so presumably, you know, this is what they train for. This is how they go about Kicking this. indoors. Did he got that tight? Do they have to do this in Unlike every his radio, way, so speak you know, tight. If you're not getting pushback or opposition or there's no danger posed from any of the individuals in the house why do they have to have such manpower like this well it does not mean that they believe that there's danger involved but you can see that these officers are not taking anything for granted they're there in uniform they're clearly identifiable as law enforcement they have what appears to be bulletproof vests on just in case something goes wrong uh they have a certain lineup they know uh in that stack if you will you know person who is going to be in front all the way down to the person who is going to be at the back they know who's responsible for breaching the doorway and it's not the kind of thing you can see there's such a difference all the way from where the gate to that property that we're looking at now is all the way to the front door of the actual residence there's some time so what law enforcement does not typically want to do is ring the doorbell and have a little chat with whoever's on the inside of the house so that if somebody has a flash drive or something that they might want to flush down the toilet or uh, otherwise remove from the residence or somehow hide they have time to deal with it 
these law enforcement officers have a plan and they're executing a plan where they also want the element of surprise. Well, I'm sorry, Lee. I'm pretty sure there's a hell of a surveillance system and they know y'all coming at this point. Uh, I think the last kind of federal raid in the public consciousness was the raid at Mar-a-Lago in South Florida back in August of 2022. And we saw that kind of all unfold as well. Of course, I'm not comparing these two situations or scenes by any means. Could you imagine, you know, Gene Deal always tell these stories when he was going through the last case with Shine and he, him breaking up with Jay Lowe that Diddy was suicidal. Diddy somewhere stressed out right now because he realized, yo, my protection is gone. It's over. It's over. They're not protecting me no more because this is nothing new. This has been going on for years. Rumors about Diddy doing stuff like that's coming out now has been going on for years. So he must know at this point. He knows, yo. It's over. I mean, unless he get a dream team and he beat all the charges, you know, the hood love that. They don't care whether you're guilty or not, but if you beat all the charges, did he, you can you can come back. The hood to love you. If we don't see the warrant, we can't see the affidavit. We don't know exactly what the government is alleging occurred here. Um, we're taking a guess uh, based on some civil lawsuit information that this is probably what this is about. It's clearly a criminal investigation at this point. Uh, because you see this law enforcement individuals making entry and conducting this this warrant, this search warrant at a minimum. We don't know if it's also an arrest warrant. Um, and so it, it has to be that there's some interstate commerce or some crossing of state lines that was affected to make this a federal case. Um, and the reality is, is that even though a person may have a peaceful reputation, I know nothing about Mr. Combs' reputation. Um, law enforcement needs to go in as if the situation could turn violent at any time because these types of allegations are incredibly serious. Somebody who is ultimately arrested for human trafficking uh, could very well, depending on the charges. Uh, right. And the reason why she's saying human trafficking, because Homeland Security, that's the only time they really be involved with raiding people, Homeland Security. That's why you gotta pay attention when people get arrested. Who arrested them? Cause Homeland Security do trafficking, sex trafficking, and terrorist type of things. To kind of bring into the story a little bit, and you know, we don't want to jump to conclusions or, or you know, draw connections that aren't there. But he has suffered a lot of legal drama, so to speak, over the last three months, um, you know, almost like weekly uh, allegations being made, lawsuits being filed against him for allegations, Nicole, that go back to the early to late 90s. And we mentioned that a lot of states now have some of these laws on the books where they open a window of time, say a year, and victims can come forward no matter the statute of limitations. Uh, do you think we could possibly be seeing that be taken advantage of? Uh, any laws like that in a case like this? Gene Dill must be somewhere happy. Gene Dill gotta be live right now. He gotta be, because Gene Dill been, you know, talking about Diddy's misdeeds for a long, long time. So he gotta be out here happy somewhere. Gene um, Deal definitely got to be this, live. Uh, I'm pretty sure he is. And there's evidence that either of these Combs residents of that thing that they're accusing them of over, over the long term, it can tack back in time that way. So in other words, if, you know, the conspiracy they're alleging is still ongoing this last year, and I don't know what they're alleging, because again, we haven't seen any documentation of that, uh, but they could say, well, it's the same com conspiracy that's been ongoing for 20, 20 oh. plus years. And so, you know, that would mean that potentially, although there would definitely be arguments in court, that they can say, well, this is the same conspiracy. It was going on as of yesterday. And for that reason, we believe that we 
are going to be able to continue to prosecute no matter how old some of the initial complainants in the conspiracy were at the time. So those could be 20 years old. I mean, these these cases are incredibly burdensome for a defense team. They're expensive, they're enormously stressful. I mean, if you can imagine also, you know, he's presumed innocent. Uh, it is presumed that he's done absolutely nothing wrong, which is really a hard thing for us to imagine watching what we're watching right now on, on camera. And for a defendant accused in a case of this nature, um, you know, especially with so much time uh, potentially being at issue for witnesses to make claims, um, it's almost like having to prove a negative that it didn't happen, even though sure. that's not what our constitution or criminal no. court uh, rules require. So, um, of course, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but you are saying the very fact that these homes affiliated with Diddy are being raided in this fashion, it would be hard to, you know, down the line, you would be surprised, to, so to speak, if, if Diddy wasn't somewhat implicated in that. that. That's what my line of question is to you. You know, how likely is it that a family member, an employee, a, a staffer uh, on the grounds, or, so to speak, that they are involved primarily and that the homes just so happen to be owned by Sean Diddy Combs? Is that unlikely or likely in your, in your history? You know, just the fact that they're his residences do, uh, you know, that, that does bring concern that they believe anyway that uh, evidence of, of a serious federal crime is located in Combs' home, uh, which leads one to believe that at a minimum they think that potentially there is some involvement. I mean, his home is involved because they got a judge to sign off on a warrant saying evidence of this serious crime is in it. Sure. So he's got a battle ahead. Yeah. You know, um, I'm going to step away right now from these live pictures. Um, Nicole, I want to get your thoughts on this piece of video from how this all kicked off here. Okay, so you see there, this is in the Holmby Hills neighborhood there in Los Angeles. Um, investigators detained someone, Nicole, and you, you see this right here. This is video, this is not live, this is from earlier. Um, and I guess my question to you is, you know, what comes first, kind of the chicken or the egg, the indictment or the raid, or the raid or the indictment? Which comes first? Because you see there, they're detaining people on the ground. This was what, maybe an hour ago. No doubt they're gonna be questioned, possibly booked, uh, not sure if they're gonna be charged. We just don't know any of that. But presumably one has to happen for the other, right? You know, believe it or not, it doesn't. Uh, they can actually uh, do, ex they can execute a search warrant without charges being filed based on essentially a criminal complaint. So, I mean, no indictment in that instance. And sometimes they indict a case and they don't have everybody that they think is responsible listed in that indictment, or the grand jury hasn't indicted everybody who they think is a part of the case. Um, and so, you know, it, it, just because you're seeing people on TV right now who are, you know, being arrested, searched, handcuffed, detained, uh, set aside, doesn't mean that they're criminal defendants or criminal suspects. It could very well be that those are witnesses that were watching them secure. Okay. So there's there's no way to know yet, you know, who is being charged if there has been a charge. And sometimes indictments have been issued but are sealed and have to be unsealed by a federal judge so that we know what are the charges. Yeah, all right, let's go back out live to the pictures we have there, both in Los Angeles uh, and in Miami. You know, um, Nicole DeBoard uh, with us here on the phone. Uh, can't thank you enough. This has been really invaluable for helping us make sense of this. But if you're Diddy's legal team right now, they've been working overtime for the last, what, three, four months in unrelated cases. Uh, now I would imagine that, you know, their year has gotten so much more difficult. What? lies ahead for them. How, how much harder is their job going to be depending on whatever the charges are, whoever the defendants may be going forward? You know, they're just going to have a massive amount of information to sift through. And that's if the government gives it to them. So the government first is going to, to get all of this information. And this can get really complicated for the legal team. So, you know, up until this morning, when all of these raids started, the legal team had access to, if they wanted to go to Mr. Combs and say, I would like to see what you have on this computer. He could go to his computer and he could get it. Well, you can bet that all of those items are gonna be removed from these residences. And so now they're not accessible to the legal team until the government turns it over and the agents turn it over for review and for discovery. And that can take a while. 
So when the government takes possession of all the materials that you're using to try to understand allegations like this, the burden is just incredible. So it's going to take a ton of time for these lawyers and their legal teams to sift through this information and to try to calculate what they're even missing. You know, what what did the government take that we need access to to make sure that Mr. Combs gets due process if that's in fact what happens, that he's charged at all in these allegations? Yeah, and um, Nicole, like I said, we can't thank you enough. Um, but these are really incredible scenes um, that we are seeing. You know, not just one, but two federal raids happening in real time as we speak. So I think that is, you know, somewhat significant in the nature of this story and the possible high profile would be defendant. And you see there in Los Angeles, look at all of those investigators going up the driveway there in the mansion. And so we'll just have to wait and see, but hopefully we'll get some type of statement from, from Sean Combs, from his legal team, from his representatives there. But you can see there, Nicole, kind of a large mass of these investigators walking into the driveway and going into the home right there as well. You know, depending, and we were talking about this kind of, but you know, these homes are massive. So would you presume that these raids, these Imagine that if Dean R. Kelly was in the same jail and was roommates. That would be some crazy, crazy, crazy stories to tell. That would be a lot of YouTube and blogging for a lot of people. Breaking news, R. Kelly and Sean Diddy is roommates. I mean, they both like the same sex. I mean... From what they say, I mean, I don't know personally, but I'm just saying. For phones, they're going to be looking for tablets. They're going to be looking for security footage. They're going to be looking for anything that might record data or receive an email or send a text. So there is just a ton of work ahead for these investigators. All right, uh, Nicole DeBoard, we can't thank you enough. Uh, and maybe we'll check in a little bit later or tomorrow, depending on how this story uh, unfolds here. Nicole DeBoard, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right, in the meantime,